Hey guys, it's Lawrence here from Jet Tutorials, and today we're going to look at setting up our own proxy server, which we'll use as an alternative to a VPN. For this tutorial, we'll use Amazon AWS and Squid Cache to set up a proxy on a virtual machine. In short, the problem is that we want to access some web server or website, but for whatever reason from our network, we currently can't access it. But we do know that from another network, they would be able to access it. So the solution is for our network to send a request to the other network to pass the message onto the web server for us. This is called using a proxy server. The approach we'll use today is really simple and it basically boils down to four steps. First, we need to create a free virtual machine on Amazon AWS. Next, we need to set it up as a proxy server and configure Squid. Lastly, we need to configure our browser to use this proxy server and make sure that it works as expected. To get started, the first thing we want to do is just head over to the AWS console sign-in page and log in with our account. If you haven't already created an account there, you can go ahead and do that, but we won't run through that in this video. We'll just go straight to sign in. And we are greeted with this kind of landing page. So the next thing we need to do is just decide on a region for our proxy server. So if we're trying to access some web server or website that's only available in, say, for example, the US, and we happen to be in Europe, um, then we'd need to create a proxy server in the US. So on the top right around here, you can find uh, the region selection. And let's just make sure we're working in a US region. So we'll choose EU East 2, give it a sec to update. And there we go. From here, the next thing we want to do is head over to EC2. We'd like to launch an instance and let's give it a name. So we can just call this my proxy proxy server. Um, choose an operating system image uh, for what we're going to be doing. Ubuntu 24.04 is perfect. And then we just need to make sure that the class of machine that we're choosing is part of the free tier. In this case, it is. So we can go ahead and choose that. And if you haven't already done so yet, you can go ahead and create a key pair. And this we'll use to log into the machine. So we'll give this key pair some friendly name, my US East 2 key pair. And we want to save it in the PEM format and create key pair. And you should notice it downloads on the top right. Great. From here, one last check is that we're allowing SSH traffic from anywhere. This is quite important because we'll be using this to sign into the machine at a later stage. And that should be everything. So we can go ahead and launch the instance. Once that's done, one more step we need to do is head over to the instance. Let's take a look at it. It's busy launching, but while it launches, we just need to update some settings for it. So click on the instance name, head over to the security tab around the bottom of the screen. And this security group is what you want to edit. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we need to add an inbound rule. So edit inbound rules on the top right, add a rule, custom TCP. We want port 3128 and we want to allow traffic from anywhere on the internet. And we'll just give this rule a name, uh, any traffic to proxy port. Let's save the rule, give it a minute to update and go back and check on our instance. Great, it's running. Last thing we need to do is copy its IPv4 address. That's this address over here. And this is what we'll use to access the instance in the next step. So go ahead and copy that. Once we've got our IP address copied, we can switch over to the terminal and just make sure we're in the same directory as that key file we downloaded earlier. First thing we're going to need to do if we want to use this is make sure it's got the correct permission set. So we can just go chmod 400 and the name of the key file, hit enter, and we should be ready to sign in. Next thing we want to do is just go SSH, the name of the key file, and the username is Ubuntu at the IP address we copied. Hit enter. Yes, we do trust this connection. And we're in. Once we're in, we just want to make sure we've got all of our packages and dependencies installed for this. So to do that, we can do it in one liner. We can just go sudo apt update and sudo apt install with the Y flag squid, which is the name of our proxy software and Apache 
2-utils, which we'll use to create a password. Hit enter and give it a second. Great, once that's done, we can go into our squid's config directory, which is cd etc squid, and let's create a password. So for this, we'll go sudo ht password. We're gonna create a file called passwords, and we'll choose a username to sign in with. We can just choose my user, and let's give it a password. There we go. From here, we just need to configure Squid server to use the password file and to authenticate us when we sign in. So to do that, we're just gonna go edit the conf.d slash debian.conf file in this directory, of course. Um, edit the file and let's head over to the bottom and we're gonna add a couple new lines. First thing we wanna do is go auth param basic program and this is the uh, program that's gonna be used to run the authentication. So we can just go usr lib squid basic ncsa auth and the location of our password file, which was etc squid passwords. Next line we wanna add is auth param basic realm proxy. And then we need to create a group which we'll sign into. So that'll be ACL. Let's just give it a name, authenticated and proxy auth required. That means that we need to authenticate to sign in. And then we just need to go allow this group. So HTTP access, allow authenticated. Save the file and exit vim. Finally, to make our changes take effect, we just wanna go sudo systemctl restart squid, just to restart the service. Give it a while, sometimes it does take a few seconds. And great, let's just check that everything worked as expected. Status squid. And we can see that it is active and running. Great. Once everything's set up on our server, the last thing left to do is head over into our web browser and test out that it works as expected. For this, we're gonna just head over into settings. You can, you'll notice I'm using Firefox for this, but the same thing obviously applies to Chrome or Edge, whatever browser you may wanna use. Head over to settings, search for proxy, and let's just configure our proxy preferences. So manual proxy configuration. This will be the address of our proxy server, and this is the port. By default, it runs on port 3128 unless you change it, but we haven't in this case. Also make sure you're using the same proxy for HTTPS. Hit OK, and let's open a new tab. What's my IP? And it immediately asks us for a username and password. And this is the username and password that we created while we were configuring Squid on the server. So that will be my user and the password that we set to go with it. Hit sign in, and it works. Let's double check what the result is. What's my IP address? And there we have it, the same IP address as our server running in EC2. So at this point, all of our traffic is going through that server. So if we were to try and access some website that's based in the US, um, we should be able to do so now um, if we weren't previously able to do it from our current location. Great, that's all I have for you today. If you found this useful, please give the video a like. And if you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button. See you soon. Cheers.